Hello everybody, <clears throat> welcome back or welcome to the channel depending on which uh, which direction you're coming from. I recently was able to get a game that I thought I, I wouldn't be able to get. Now I have Into the Woods, I got the recent Into the Woods from the Great Battles of the American Civil War. And uh, I was at GMT Games weekend at the warehouse and found out that they have some out of print games there that you can purchase. This happens to be one of them that I was able to find and it's Twin Peaks. Again, it's uh, the Great Battles of the American Civil War. Uh, I was looking for this. I think this is the sixth one in this series, which is probably about as far back as I'll be able to go. But uh, this is a series system designed by Richard Berg, and uh, it has the Battles of South Mountain and the Battles of Cedar Mountain. And again, it's by GMT Games, and it was 2014. So uh, needless to say, I was, I was very happy when I, when I came upon, upon this. So. Uh, uh, happy to find it. It has a two inch box and this is the little thinner box because it's, it's an older version. It's not like the thicker boxes that GMT has everything in now. And on the back we have uh, the map and it's a two-sided map according to this information over here. And it, yeah, Twin Peaks is volume six of the Great Battles of the American Civil War. Two full games are included, Cedar Mountain and South Mountain. And um, this game originally, uh, the, the design for these games was originally done uh, by Richard Berg in 1976. Terrible Swift Swords by SPI was the first one. Of course, uh, the um, rules and the game uh, mechanics has been updated since and it, it adapted well in most cases. So the game itself, Twin Peaks, contains uh, two battle games, each with its own full-size map. Over here we have game scale, it's 50 men or one cannon per st uh, strength point. Maps are between, map size hexes are between 120 and 150 yards. The time each game turn is 45 minutes and players one to four. Inside includes 122 by 34 standard size double map, two terrain effect charts, three um, one half inch counter sheets, so three of them. One um, Great Battles of the American Civil War series rule book. Uh, two cards double-sided for turn track and holding boxes. Two battle booklets. Two folded charts and tables. And two ten-sided die. So the complexity is up at a seven, which is, you know, high. I, well, that's about normal for this series is from the ones I've seen. Solitaire suitability is at an eight. So that's also high there too. So again, like I said, series design, Richard Berg. Uh, did that and uh, game designer is Greg Lonbach. I hope I'm pronouncing that and Richard H. Berg. So those two uh, collaborated on that. Here are the other five volumes which I most likely won't be able to see at any time soon or at least not be able to afford those. But I'm happy to have this one so let's take a look inside and see what we have here. And I hear it bounce stuff bounce around. Now again like I said it's the smaller size box and open up and like the older game is always included uh, some little note telling you that they packaged it carefully and uh, best wishes and many enjoyable uh, hours. So very nice from Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. And so we start out with the series rule books and we'll move this aside so that we can look at this. Now the series rule book has a component terminology. Uh, oh, questions down there. Sequence of play, a command system, activation system, order system, a facing and refusal. Stacking and extensions, movement, uh, fire combos, shock assaults, combat results, morale and rally, uh, special units, engineer, knight, and fatigue options. So we have a total of uh, 30 pages, it looks like. And then we have an index on page 31. Now, I like the way that this is broken down into sections. Uh, black and white printing. So we have some of our units here in explanation. Sequence of play. Artillery commands. So uh, this is typical of the great battles of the American Civil War. And I can go, you know, some diagrams here showing you how it plays. Now the latest version of this on the GMT uh, website. So I'd recommend you head on over there and find the latest version, which is what I will probably do. Uh, hopefully that won't affect the gameplay too much by using the latest rules. But I'm just going through this. This is just your standard rule book, you know, strength point losses, retreats. It covers everything you need to know about the games in general. And these apply to all of the games in this series. 
So your rule book. Then we have two of these rule books, and these are the battle books for South Mountain and Cedar Mountain. So each one has a separate battle book. I'm sure some of the, the um, rules are the same. Some will be a little different for the terrain and the type of battle that it was. Introduction components here. And we go on down through here and we see that historical, the scenarios start on page six. So we only have five rules of uh, special rules on, on the South Mountain. Cedar Mountain also starts the scenario on page six. So we have five rules here, the same thing. We have little different categories here. Uh, artillery movement at night, I don't see that over here. So we do have some different rules here. So let's take a look at one of these. We'll try look at South Mountain first. And it doesn't have too many pages on it. So it's funny, these ones are printed in color and they're, they're kind of a, a glossy paper. But they do have some examples. Engineer, engineering, hidden units, combat results, morale rally, and scenarios. Then we start the scenarios here. And I like the, I like the pictures here. <laughs> this guy sitting on a stump there. And then we have a smaller scenario here. So I think this one has three different scenarios in it. And we have the back page and the credits. Sequence of play for this one. And this is South Mountain. And let's see, this one has two scenarios. So we have two different games in this one. Then we have Cedar Mountain. And so again, this is also uh, printed in color. And it has some special units here. Stacking, that might be a little different on, on South Mountain. Uh, optional units, I guess these were units that could have been in the battle. And then we start the scenario here, and I think this one has one scenario. Historical scenario, so there's number two. Historical scenario, 1400 start. Historical scenario, 1700 start. And then we have the credits here, down at the bottom. And then alternate scenario here. So we do have three scenarios on this particular one and units that are added to it. And we have the sequence of play on the back. So that's Cedar Mountain. Then we have two uh, disorder tables here. Uh, both of them say Twin Peak on it, so I'm assuming that they, they work for both of them. They look about the same. And on the back here, we have the Battle of Cedar Mountain terrain chart and South Mountain terrain chart. So South Mountain has, looks like a little bit more terrain to it. So two different uh, terrain sheets, but the other sides, they look, uh, they look almost identical. The disorder tables, the second disorder tables. So they look identical. Then we have the Confederate um, battle. Let's see, battle of the turn track. So we have the Confederate turn track here. We have South Mountain and Cedar Mountain. Uh, we have AM in play, Confederate AM in play. Uh, Confederate route or regrouping, uh, Confederate elimination, and same way down here. And I think these are single-sided. Yes, they are. So these are the Confederate Army turn track and um, draw markers and casualty boxes. Then we have the two Union turn track, draw marker, and casualty boxes here. And they sort of follow along the same time frame. And we have one for South Mountain. One for Cedar Mountain. Now this I found I find interesting because we have Twin Peaks, the Battle of South Mountain, and Cedar Mountain here. They look like they may be identical. And let's see this center here. So we have Brigade co uh, Coordination, Order Change Table and Coordination Table, Rally, Loose Cannon, Aggressive. And that looks about the same on both of them. Let's see if it's the same on the inside can't really tell it it looks oh no this is definitely different this one here so yeah so we do have a little bit of different uh, fire table for south mountain as compared to the fire table on cedar mountain so there is a little difference there there's effective terrain on uh, south mountain here not on the cedar mountain so we have two independent player aid cards and the back looks very similar but again i'm not giving it a re real detailed look. I'm just looking at the size comparison of the pieces here. So again, we have two player aid cards, one for South Mountain, one for Cedar Mountain. Then we come to the part that everybody likes, the counters. Now these are um, 
relatively small counters. Let me see how small exactly they are. So they're exactly half inch counters, these ones here. And there's a lot of them. And it seems like if you like games with a lot of counters, the uh, American Civil War seems to be the way to go. So this is counter sheet one of four, and this is the front side. And then almost all of them have a step. So all of them have a double side printing. That's the first counter sheet. Counter sheet number two. And these are the uh, Union troops here. And it looks like we have some more Confederates over here. And I'm just going by color, assuming that they are all color coded. So that's nice. And we have a lot of our leaders up at the top here. And the back side, again, a lot of two-step pieces here. So um, going to be interesting to see how the battles play out. All right, so here's our markers. Uh, card number one with markers. And this is counter sheet number three. And these are the thinner cardboard, so they have a little bit of flex to them, and they are they are thin pieces. Then we have the back side. And we have our counter sheet number four. And again, these are some more game marker counters. I have a lot of fatigue. <laughs> so that's a big factor in this game because apparently it was quite hot when they were doing the battle. Interesting, we have we have bags and we have two blue die which might be confusing. I'm, I'm always thinking that they'll be an opposite color, but we have two blue dye here in this particular game. 10 sided. So here's our map. I know I can't get it all in the frame for you because uh, my camera just doesn't sit high enough, but um, I'll move it around here. Uh, this one's the South Mountain map. And we come in with a lot of roads down here and pretty much it looks like flatlands. And then we start getting into some mountain scenery here, up here. And as we continue to go on over, we see that this is for Twin Peaks. And coming up the top, we have our elevation levels. And then we have our terrain. I like the elevation where it's just the number levels so that you don't have to say, oh, well, that's between, you know, 200 and 300 feet. Can you see over that? You know, because you're at 199. So this is just levels there, which makes it, it's 100 foot each level. So it, it makes it a little easier to interpret. So that is the South Mountain map. And here we have the Cedar Mountain. Now the Cedar Mountain map actually goes this direction. It's a thinner map. Let's go both north and south, and I can't really show it to you that well on my setup there, but there's the bottom. There's Cedar Mountain down here, and a lot of open, looks like farmland here. They have cornfields, what these are. And then we get into some woods over here. Let me just fold this over so I can get this in frame. And then we start coming into some more woods at the top. And then this area there, and we can see that north is actually running this way across here. And again, we have our terrain map, which we also have that on the uh, other cards. So that is the Cedar Mountain map. And again, not, not just separate maps. They are um, just the backside printed on both sides. So Cedar Mountain on one, and uh, South Mountain on the other. Okay, so that's my box opening for Twin Peaks. And again, this was a game that um, I did not think I'd be able to afford to get uh, because, you know, on eBay or other places, out of, out of uh, print games are rather expensive. But um, just by attending the weekend at the warehouse at GMT, I was able to get this game. And you're gonna see a lot of box openings from that weekend because um, I spent way more money than I probably should have. But I wanted to complete some collections, which I was able to, and uh, add to others and get games that I was missing. And this was one that I was hoping to get. Did not think I would, but I was able to get it at the uh, weekend of the warehouse. So if you enjoyed that video, please do like and subscribe. Subscribe is really important. I do spend some time on these videos and I want to continue doing that. Um, hopefully I will have an audience to watch them, which is always uh, wonderful. And uh, I really appreciate you stopping by this time. And um, 
if you're listening to this you at least listen to the end so thank you for watching you have a good day